We are surrounded by music in every day. Rise of streaming services such as Apple Music and Spotify contributed largely to our accessibility to music. You might listen to music when you study, or perhaps a headphone is your essential item when you go to the gym to get some blood flow in your body. Music is literally everywhere in these days, and they have certain influence on our experience and perception of the world. I would like to talk further about the experience of eating and influence of music. Scientific study found that certain t y p e of music influences our perception of taste, and it is known as sonic seasoning. Crisinel and Spence explore ways sound can influence the taste of food and drink. They confirm the association of sweet and sour tastes to high pitched notes. As well as umami and bitter tastes being matched to low pitched notes. North revealed that people's rating of the taste of the wine corresponded with the emotional connotations of the background music while they tasted it. The wine was perceived as significantly more refreshing when the refreshing music was played rather than any other. And the wine was perceived as significantly more powerful and heavy when the powerful and heavy music was played. In a broader context, many companies apply these theories to their marketing strategies. I know of companies over in the Netherlands who are selling a bitter ball and kind of these little fried snacks that go with your beer. Very Dutch treat, and they're accentuating the sound of the crunch in the adverts on TV. You might think of something like a Magnum ice cream, kind of a chocolate covered ice cream lolly. And again, when the model on the TV set in the advert bites into that ice cream, you'll hear a crunch, a crack of the chocolate that may be louder than is really the case because the advertisers are now understanding the importance of sound and conveying a certain expectation. Many food companies utilize sonic branding as a way to convince customers that their products are fresh and delicious. Think of the pop of a Snapple cap or the fizz of an ice cold Coca Cola. In chapter one, I explain about the relationship between music and taste from a psychological perspective, although it provides us a very interesting insight about our perception. Science treats music as a product and concerns only about one direction. Music affects our taste, but how about the influence of taste on our perception of music? So, in the next chapter, I'd like to discuss more about music as a multi directional process by explaining about the relationship between music and emotion. Emotion can affect our music, but music can affect our emotion. Let's see. On the other hand, we know from our experiences that music evokes different kinds of emotions. Philip Ball points out in his book, The Music Instinct, our tendency and inclination to synchronize our body movement to external rhythmic stimuli, namely, Music. That's why you like to go to a party and dance until dawn. Music moves our body unconsciously and it is associated with emotions. This is just one of the reasons why music evokes various emotions. When it comes to emotion and taste, Noel and Dandel examine the effect of emotional state. On taste perception. The analysis suggests that positive emotions are correlated with enhanced sweet and diminished sour tastes, while negative emotions are associated with heightened sour and decreased sweet tastes. We do not listen to certain elements of music, rather, we enjoy our experience of music. For example, Jimmy Scott. An American jazz vocalist has a unique high voice, and people sometimes perceive it as a female voice. 
His album cover features an African American woman, and it gives us an expectation as if the song is sung by a female vocalist. Yes, Jimmy Scott is a male, but our experience with it is a bit different from others. Moreover, a position in the history or social norm can have an effect on our perception of music. As you can see from these examples, music is not all about auditory characteristics, but it is a constant negotiation and conversation with ourselves. We explored sonic seasoning as an example of how different disciplines, in this case music and psychology, treat the same subject differently. On one hand, music as a product that can be used to change and amplify our perception of taste and experience in general. And on the other hand, music as a fluid, dynamic process within society and culture. Psychology has been studying human behaviors in a scientific way, and to some extent, it has a significant influence on our daily lives. For instance, certain music can control our intake of sugar, but certainly, it has some limitations. Psychology cannot include all variables that are essential for music itself. There are some tensions between psychology as a part of science and music as a part of art. Music is just one example. We need to be aware of the fact that we see and treat things differently based on position to take.